fine, we're on now, but it's on my list to make like a cool intro and ready to rock and prep up the crowd and whatever. Welcome to Rule Zero. You guys know John, you know Aaron, you know Rolo. How's it going? Yo, Aaron, start with I'm, you with that damn shirt. We need to hear more colorful I, talk. I'm on vacation. I knew shirt day would have bored me. I'm I'm <laughs> on vacation day number four of a month long vacation. So the house is almost done. Nice. I sent you guys the picture of that retaining wall I'm working on. That's like literally the last thing I have to do. And out of six brick layers, I have six more to go. So, that, dude, you can do bricklaying. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're smaller ones. I'm a smaller guy. How do they say what kind of size bricks you want? Well, I'm a smaller guy, so they gave me smaller bricks. Oh, you can't lay pipe. You gotta lay bricks. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> Good to see you back, Rolo. Yeah. yeah like, how yeah, are you? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> John's not here. Somebody had to step I'm, it up. <laughs> I'm gonna come out to South Dakota. It looks too beautiful there. Every time you post another shot, I gotta go fish. And there are fish in those streams. Like I see them, and that they're they're a little smaller, but depending oh, man, where you South go. South Dakota's world class, man. Wyoming and South Dakota. Mm. Well, when are you coming back then? I know you've said it before, but I want to say it for the audience now. When am I coming back? Yeah, when are you coming back? People love Clary and they want July to see more. 1st. No, you guys should be somewhat honored. On like, I'm on vacation, but I like doing this. I enjoy hanging out with you guys and getting ridiculed and have my, my manlyhood made fun of. Uh, but I still, yeah, this is part of my vacation. We're going, we're going to take the convertible through the Black Hills and just F around, like just chill out. I'm going to buy the girls some cocktails and then uh later on this afternoon before the rain hits i'm going to put a couple more layers of that retaining wand but yeah mm. I, i'm just i'm just chilling out and doing nothing or only what i want to do mm. fair enough i'm just looking forward to Jan july 1st mm. then i get to wear i'll wear an american flag you know like windbreaker and tune right in <laughs> sit down in the chat throw you a five dollar super chat asking about the cuck article and we'll see where that goes from there okay all right <laughs> you have tuned into my show oh okay yeah <laughs> and then john dude I, I don't know what to ask other than if you beat the fuck out of anybody lately. No, just oh, well, that's students. ridiculous. But no, seriously, you still have your training camp going on, do you not? For survival. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've got Honestly. I've got a new student who uh he's in his fifties, but he was a he was an ex soldier. So he's used to carrying like a knife and having a concealed carry, stuff like that. <laughs> but he was on a cruise ship and some guy tried to start shit with him then you can't have anything on the cruise ship so he felt naked <laughs> so <laughs> he's been coming to me to learn how to defend himself without without any of his weapons oh so you're gonna so. train him to turn a, a banquet table into a deadly weapon or what yep. yes <laughs> see these look like cinnamon buns but in reality <laughs> even Seagal, you know, breaks off a chair leg <laughs> with yeah. the bread stick. <laughs> <laughs> weird thing though like those aren't cheap are the cruise ships aren't cheap you guys have those a lot in the states are they oh no this guy's, this guy's like who's gonna go on there and then pull some ghetto shit like putting a 50 cal finger in a dude's chest i don't know yeah. i think there are some cruises that are rather affordable yeah um, yeah have you, you know i've never been on a cruise i have no desire to ever go on a cruise but same i used to do it for a living so i'm like no <laughs> I guess you really didn't trapped on a boat with a bunch of people. I mean, yeah, I why like would you guys out. sail for fun? Are you fucking man. stupid? <laughs> All right, fair enough. Well, Rolo, you're back to normalcy now, so let's hook it up. <laughs> yeah, Give me something new. <laughs> well, normal enough. I haven't heard like, well, I'm flying to here tomorrow and no, then flying no, here. No, I'm going. I um, gosh, I I don't know how much I should reveal. Uh, I have a um, I've got I'm going to Rebel Capitalist uh, the last week in June. So I will be in Miami from the 20th to the 28th. I actually had to extend my stay because I am meeting up with Patrick Bet David, and I will be uh, discussing some things with him. Uh, if you guys have seen any of his uh, videos lately, you'll understand why. Um, and then I have been working a lot with uh, Adam Sosnick. I've uh, been uh, kind of coordinating, for lack of a better term, like directing, I guess, his Thursday shows. And um, I got him, Derek Thomas, who is a guy who is a, he and his brother are like fitness guys in Miami. And if you know who these guys are, they are just like, I've never seen a human being as ripped as uh, as Derek. His brother's pretty ripped too, but like these guys are ex-military and they're in the red pill space, but they're fitness guys as well. And and I got Derek on the show on Thursday and it, it went off pretty well. I was, you know, for a last minute kind of addition, I thought it was pretty good. But um, uh, other than that, I will be at Rebel Capitalist. I'm going to be doing a workshop out there for uh, for George Gammon's uh, event. It will be, I believe it's at the Hilton in Midtown. 
Um, but if you want more information on the Rebel Capitalist, if that's your groove, uh, you can just go check it out on on George Gammon's site. I will be on with um, Andrew from Legal Mindset on Monday. Uh, my show, of course, is coming up again once as as usual on 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern uh, tomorrow. Uh, I will be talking about the Amber Heard thing, but I'm going to talk about it from a different angle. I know everybody and their mother's been doing it, but like I wanted to wait it out a little bit to see what happens. Um, and then primarily the reason for that is because I knew it was going to happen in the wake of it. I have been talking. I didn't realize this. I have been talking about the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial since 2016. Since like the the latter half of 2016, that's when the first all all this stuff started coming down. I can remember. I think I probably still have them uh, talking about Amber Heard and Johnny oh, Depp with Pat Campbell back in like 2017, 2018, somewhere around there. And uh, I was just going back through my backlog of of tweets. And so when people say, "Oh man, Roll's not covering Amber Heard and Johnny Depp," I was like, "Dude, I've been doing this for like six years. What are you talking about?" <laughs> I I can't believe they just ran you up the flagpole for nothing, nothing. No, and then by the way, also I'd like to also point out that uh, it, it, you know, not that this is news to anybody, but um, uh, Anthony Johnson is a a bald face, you know, straight up liar. So let's just I'm going to throw that one out there because uh, yesterday I don't know if it's still up right now, but he was saying something to the effect that I was uh, reported to the FBI for fifty thousand dollars of wire fraud, and I'm like, prove it. Wire Show fraud? It. What Show the hell? It. Until you have receipts, you are a liar, sir. You are lying, lying what? straight to your audience and lying straight to everybody else with your with uh, the guy. I forget who he was on with. It wasn't O'Shea. It was his, O'Shea's partner. But he was coming at he was coming at Donovan. And then, of course, they used the title that I'm I, that do you my face and putting like, oh, is he with a question mark? Of course, you know, is Rolo guilty of fifty thousand dollars of wire fraud? Uh, news to that, me. That sounds like something from the 70s. So do you guys have wire weird. transfer still? Oh, he's he's, he's, to say they, that's, they gotta like, where the fuck trip. did this come from? I was like. Fifty thousand bucks, man! I, I'm, gee, I need to up my game for wire fraud if that's it. Isn't and that I was just like, he's, he was saying, he was, he was, I don't know where he's pulling the shit out of his ass, but he's like, oh yeah, in 2020, I reported him to the FBI. Well, that might be true. You can report people for anything. Sure. I reported uh, Clary to the really? January sixth thing, you, you but they probably never would. Him up. Yes, yeah, yeah right, right. Yeah. Out, no, out of curiosity, is it him for that? Sure, it's, it's no. The guy is one hundred percent. Like, you know what, Anthony? If you show me the receipts, it's really, because until you do, you're a liar. Anthony, I want you to go on camera, do a 10 minute rant calling Rolo an asshole because I need another advertisement and I need some footage. (laughs) Isn't it so absurd that it doesn't even require a response? (laughs) What's that? Go ahead. I I was just going to say, isn't it so absurd that you don't even have to, like, okay, yeah. I mean, by this point, wouldn't it be just, yeah, okay, whatever? (laughs) I mean,. It, yeah, it, it, well, it, 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 the, the lies just get bigger and bigger and bigger. It's just like he, he, I don't know, he's just grasping for fucking right. straws at this point. So works for me. But, but, but by the way, I, I think what was it yesterday or the day before was like I've been dealing with this for three fucking years. That's it's just nonstop. It's all he's done for the fucking three. Oh, happy years. anniversary! I totally forgot. Yeah, <laughs> happy anniversary for getting the original flagpole. In case you don't know, that's actually what was the impetus to start Rule Zero in the first place. So we've been doing we've been doing this for three years. It's awesome. Congratulations yeah. to everybody. Well, here, and this is perfect, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this runs into the, the segue for the topics. I think, I don't know if guys caught it, but I really find a bad taste in my mouth when red pill guys start talking about communities of men and rites of passage and we need a role model and shit like that. Or Rolo, if you're not jacked with a six inch dick and six figure salary, then why am I even following you? And yeah. But you know what I mean? It sounds, I don't know if it's juvenile. Or if it's the case, remember from your article, Vulnerability, where you talk about men being raised as defective women? Mm -hmm. And that's what I was kind of hoping. We go through this to now and we kind of sort that out. So my my lead off here is Rule Zero Dad, one of the best moderators in the chat, which if I paid his billable hours, this thing would be making no money. (laughs) Where he puts that men are conformist, posing as individualists. He said this about a year ago, and I fully believe it. And here's the start off. So, John, here's your thought on this one. You see a lot of guys, they like being like, I'm a man, I do things myself, but generally speaking, follow giant crowds. Do you find that in your experience, in the fighting world maybe, maybe just talking with your John Fitch knows nothing stuff or what? Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, with fighters, you have a lot of individuals, but they will still, you know, go with the crowd. 
you know it doesn't it doesn't make you uh it, you know unable you know it doesn't make you completely separate being just because you're involved in something that is very individualistic yeah well that's what so, i kind of got me thinking you don't want to go along and get along and be a part of the group yeah well that, and the dana white stuff we've talked about that before where mm -hmm. you're basically giving guys advice and experience that's going to help them so they don't get screwed and they would rather conform to this group yet every time yeah. you see them on a promo it's them puffing their chest how like i'm the best i'm the greatest nobody can stop me i'm by i'm one man among all mm -hmm. yeah but they won't they won't stand up to their manager they won't they won't you know stand up <laughs> the motor. they won't they won't fight for an extra 60 to 80 percent higher pay <laughs> you know like it, it's it's very it's mind-boggling you know because these are supposed to be the toughest scariest guys out there and yeah. you know they're they're willfully not understanding a situation just because they don't want to rock the boat and then yeah rollo same thing the leverage mm -hmm. here so you're dealing now with like rebel capital now i don't i'm mm -hmm. not slamming those guys at all but the idea of calling it rebel capital it does seem like capital. there's a financial system in place and we're the renegades and we go against it mm -hmm. and you've met with a lot of people from these things so i'm assuming you see all types i'm not talking about like the the gammons the guys who got their shit together and they know it mm -hmm. i'm talking about some of the guys that are maybe starting to learn it do you find that that even that kind of similar to the way we see red pill guys talking about women or John sees with his fighters where it's everybody just wants to be conformist. They want to go with the herd. They'd rather be the gatherer than the hunter. Do you know where I'm going with this one? I think, I think really a lot of that is like, I, I mean, it, you have to separate like who's, who's doing what. So if I'm working with like Kiyosaki, if I'm working with uh gammon or Kenny McElroy or, you know, any of these guys, hell, I mean, you could even say Patrick, bet David and, and, and Adam Sosnick and these guys, they've already had, they've got their money together, right? They've already had that before they got into this sphere. So it's not like they go, Oh, I need a niche. And I think I'm going to start uh, pretending to be an entrepreneur or whatever the hell that means now. Um, and so you got to separate the guys who like, that's why we say, you know, we did that one, uh, that one show where we were like, you know, vet your guru kind of thing. Oh yeah. Um, Classic. <laughs> yeah. Was, that was a good show for us actually, I think, uh, in many different ways. So it's not just a, it's not just about like red pill gurus, you know, who you're going to follow. It's like, who else, like who else is your guru? Like as far as, you know, we're, we're basically all teachers more or less. I tried to make this a, a, a feature of my, my speech when I was at the CME and it's, I, I think a lot of guys don't really realize that, um, certainly a younger generation but uh, an uneducated generation looks to guys like me and aaron and you actually everybody on this panel uh as sort of de facto teachers because they're not getting education certainly not from their parents and certainly not from universities and so where do they go they look for for you know the dad they never had but also the the teacher that they never had too so you got to separate that and then the other part is that like guys who want to get into this space um the, one thing i've noticed is that Certainly, I would say for at least the last 20 years or so, um, we have relied upon like popular media to be creative for us. And what I mean by that is like we we don't like the vast majority, at least in my estimate here uh, of guys are looking for like that template. They're looking for this, the, the, the 12, you know, 12 rules for life, right? They're looking for the 12 step program or the eight, seven steps for this. One of the reasons why you see like these uh, these videos on YouTube, uh, like five, five reasons why you're not doing this, right? Five, you know, this, if any kind of list, if you put a list out there, people love that shit, man. They just eat that stuff up because it seems like something that, okay, I can follow this. This isn't something that I have to create myself. Somebody's already, uh, you know, done the work for me and I'm just going to follow in their path. <laughs> and that's why, you know, 12 rules for life or, or 48 laws of power, by the way, I should say as well, anything that is a numbered list. That's why people gravitate towards like the nine iron rules of Tomasi, right? I did that. By the way, you will never, the only place you will find all those rules collected is in my book. When I was writing those out and I was putting that together on uh, the you know the foggy days of so suave, I tried deliberately kept those things separate because I didn't want people to think of them as sort of like as oh, oh this, this, and this and this and this and this and this and this. Well, I just realized you just described the guys liking listicles is like yeah. the, you remember that like dude does the chores and this chores with the blow job and this that yeah, it's like this, that yes 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 the gold star it was at a cookie time for good boy that's what yeah, we used to call it with the contract with the universe yeah, cookie time for good boy all you got to do is right. get enough gold stars on your chart just like you know, do your chores little boy and then you'll right, get a blow job 
But list. there's like never really a promise on the other side too. You know, it's that nobody ever says, you know, what the result is. It's just you'll get that state of goodness. Well, and and the, here's the other part of that too is, uh, and I think a lot of people have picked up on this. If you do lists or if you do, if you set out some sort of template, some kind of program for people to follow, they want a prescription. That's why like they get really frustrated with me because the red pill is not about prescriptions. It's about descriptions. And so people go, well, what do I do with all this? Li you know, show me how to live master. And I'm like, ah, uh, that's up to you really i mean i'm not you you're not me i'm not going to give you a freaking program but the reason why they want this is because they want somebody to be creative for them they want somebody to, to give them the proven you know and then they want it in too long didn't read format as well like okay i gotta do this and the reason another the the last part is this is that the reason why those are very popular is not only is it like sort of sets the path you know okay if i do these things it's also selling you that program because what happens is uh, that when you're buying like self-help, like if you go like one of the reasons why self-help books are so popular, it's like one of the number one categories of books. <laughs> it's so popular is because what happens is people will buy, I talked about this with John before, people will buy the self-help book or they'll buy the program or they'll buy Body Language Mastery or they'll, the, whatever your teachable thing is, uh, whatever your program is, or but like they'll get a, um, a membership to a gym right in the in the in january and it's the purchasing of the gym membership or it's the purchasing of oh, the new year's the eve book. effect or the yeah the new year's yes. resolution effect it's the purchasing of that thing that says okay now i've got the plan when i have time i'll come back to it you know i've got the uh, i've got this great book i'm supposed to read here it's going to help me fix my life but in the meantime i got to go to work and i got to take care of the kids and i got to get laid and i got to go you know uh, to the grocery store or whatever else but i know that in my back of my head i've already bought this book and that's the plan so when I'm ready, I'll come back to it. And they never do. There's never any follow up. There's never it's it's the purchasing of the s temporary satisfaction of having solved a problem because you bought the plan or the direction, you know, the instruction manual for that problem. And so your brain says, oh, I've already done the work. I went and purchased the program. I can do it in the future. I haven't got it yet, but I can in the future solve this problem when I'm ready to solve it. And what happens is people will buy more and more and more and more based on the fact that they think they're buying a solution and their head thinks that they, they don't do any work, they don't do any follow through, but they have the gratification of thinking that they've resolved that issue because they purchased the program or the instruction manual. It's like buying fire insurance. Exactly. <laughs> I'm covered. Yeah. And sure, that's like, one of, what you want to know, like, why, again, why people get frustrated with me because I don't sell those solutions. I don't well, the sell those mutual. Because you need because you need to go through the process. You need to go through the process. Like even John will say, you know, that you got to you to go from a white belt to a black belt. You got to get into the ring and get your ass kicked dozens and dozens of times before you can master, you know, moving up to the, even just the next belt, right? Because it's a process, yeah. and you can't just purchase a black belt and go. I guess I'm okay. I can come back to the black belt manual anytime I want. I'm ready to jump in the ring just in case, right? You don't get to do that, but your brain you your you belt already belt. completed it, and that's uh, I think that that's probably part of the reasons why you know when we're talking about like needing role models and, and teaching and stuff like that where they're not necessarily looking for the role models they're not looking for the for the guru they're looking for the person who's going to sell them the gratification of having resolved a problem that they'll never resolve because they just don't do the follow-through and that's why and this is an answer this is for clary i'm gonna pass it off to him makes you wonder then so people want a dad 2.0 a teacher 2.0 a guru mm -hmm. yeah. so that they can solve a problem the guru guys, they're generally following a template too, right? Like, I'm sure everybody's gotten that tweet for Hustlers University where like, yeah, we'll send you the we'll send you the key, but they make you jump through some hoops first to catch the people that are invested, whatever. It's Scientology. Yeah, it's like Scientology, but that's the thing. So <laughs> the good gurus and brands know that the other person actually doesn't want to solve a problem. They just want to feel like they can solve a problem. And mm -hmm. so they sell him a fictional solution that doesn't solve anything and then everybody makes money for it so from an economic standpoint is this actually a good thing people want to be lied to the guy does the lying everybody pretends that they're saving lives or well, is this more like one of is this more like that broken window uh you remember the broken, broken window, window thing where they're like yeah, you break a yeah. window people fix it but that's not right. actually helping the economy all we're on the scale is this go that regularly yes uh i mean it, the, good for who Good for society. It's horrible for society because there's no genuine progress, but good for the individual selling. Yes. Uh, and it kind of depends on what your your moralities and ethics are. Um, <clears throat> for example, like if, if I were more moral and gave a damn about society, 
I would say this is bad. You're not helping anyone. Uh, Oprah would have been the founding example of this where she's the life coach, life guru. And all she did was make an entire generation of boomer and maybe some Gen X women miserable spinsters. Absolutely horrible. But from her perspective, from an opportunist perspective or Machiavellian, she's a billionaire. Um, you know, and, and even I've I've kind of tried to dabble into that you know, pond and try and make, cut, catch a couple fish with, with some, uh, uh operation evil, uh, uh, overtures, uh, because I'm just plain sick and tired of trying to sell broccoli when everyone wants ice cream. And, uh, so it, it's not, it's not good for society, but who gives a damn? Uh, I, I can't fault anyone coming in here selling a treatment and not a cure. Uh, whether that might be Hustler. I saw Hustlers University. But I had to ask you guys on the chat. I'm like, what's Hustlers? I looked it up like because I got the same emails. And I'm like, holy cow, this isn't going to improve anybody's lives. This really isn't. Uh, no, it's literal if, vaporware. It's right. psychology. Yeah, well, but it's it. And that and then you see what the real product is. Do, do you hate the drug dealers because they sell highs or <laughs> do you got to hate the drug addict? And so um, it's it's not good, but then at the same time, there are some good things. Like for a, a classic example um, is Modern Life John's uh, course, where I think a third of the people purchase it but never even open it up. Mm -hmm. If you follow what's in there, and that's the key thing is execution. If you follow what's in the rational mail, you actually show up and get trained by John Fitch and you don't leave. You know, you actually get your ass kicked. You follow the financial discipline and, and frugality I recommend in, in my finance books. Your your life will improve. So there is the opportunity for good there, but that is that is incumbent upon the consumer of the of the material. But then there's just like the there's like a life coach bubble where so it's like you know, putting out a good product though and and leading a cult. Yeah, there, there is a fine line, but where it's like, here, follow it. Here, here's the advice. It's up to you to follow it. I don't give a damn. Um, and so, you know, it, it's not it's no longer the teacher's responsibility. Uh, but where, where I kind of where you get these fake gods, these fake role models you're talking about is some Johnny come lately. I've never heard of who never worked a real job to begin with in the first place. Olsen shows up like, hey, take my my gum road. Take this. Take that. It's like, who the hell are you? He's 26 at, years old. Yeah, 26 years old. Yeah, you know, and, and like, oh, I got all the answers to the universe and take this course. And it's like, well, if some sucker pays you, I guess I can't fault you. I mean, I guess you made your money. But uh, that's about the only criticism I would have is some nobody, not because you're not popular, but you have you weren't in you weren't in the military. You didn't serve. You didn't fight. You didn't. Hell, you didn't just bartend for your entire life and, and live life. You just decide. Is well, that an I'm AOC gonna, dig? It's like, an, no, no, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a legit, well, a perfect parallel would be, let's take a look at the liberal arts of the social sciences. Those only exist to say, well, I'm going to be at 20 years old. I'm going to decide how the world should be managed and governed. <laughs> the arrogance and cockiness of that without actually working a real job, whether There's it's never just, paying taxes, really. never paying taxes, right? Oh, here, here's this, this literal child that doesn't know anything about mm. the real world yet. He or she is going to tell us about gun control or taxes or the poor. It's kind mm. of the same thing here. Here's a freaking and you could even be older. But if you didn't get your dick wet a bunch of times, how, how dare you tell people and young men about how to get laid and game and all this other stuff? And so just like you got to get into the ring in, in Fitch's arena, you have to get into the ring of life before you have any seasoned and veteran experience to actually pass on that wisdom. And so that's where I'd have any kind of gripe with, you know, vet your idols very carefully, vet your, your coaches very carefully. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's my the only gripe I would have. But even then, like, well, if you can make money on it, sure, go ahead, because most of the people are sheep. Well, that's the thing. You're right. They are sheep. Like, why are they sheep? That's kind of where I wanted to get into this one. I know it's a she I hate asking why, but it seemed like a good way to kill two hours and have a couple people in the chat learn something about themselves. Like the why? Why do they need to follow a leader? And why do guys have this duality where we both have to follow somebody? But we also have to pretend that we're we can do it ourselves. We're like you laid brick, so I mean, I'm just saying you could handle shit by yourself. I mean, but most guys I, can't lay brick. Yeah, yeah. But they mm -hmm. will follow you because he's the best damn brick laying guru ever. They'll defend you online when somebody talks any smack about you. They're harassing John <laughs> at his house right wall? now. <laughs> Did you see that wall? Yeah, you see that wall. 
<laughs> Aaron gets so much shit. So much shit. I but you guys, do you guys see that. what I mean, though? It's, that's it's that's weird. Thing, it's like, though. That's your thing. Like, that's why that's how you know we love you. Well, Ryan, <laughs> let me let me add to some, another variable we should probably introduce to this. Yeah, yeah. And that is that is laziness. Both the consumers of material instruction, life mm-hmm. advice, whatever, are lazy. And they're looking for the e- like, as Rich Cooper would always say, the cheat codes. And I'm, I'm, I rapidly ran out of patience with those people. But there's also the gurus who are also lazy where they see this and they're like, oh, that sounds easy and it's fun. And it's it's fun. It's easier than a real job. I'll admit that. But we didn't get here by like waking up one day. I'm going to be an influencer. I'm going to be a life coach. But there's such a temptation mm. uh, where now you have this essence of the blind leading the blind. We're self-declared uh pharisees and leaders and thought leaders and whatever they're going to lead us to the promised land and people like yeah i want to believe it uh where there is no authenticity or actual production but after a while it's just it's all people just avoiding work and avoiding a real job whether that's self-improvement or the the life coach is trying to figure it out so there is a huge economic incentive to participate in this industry uh especially for those who are fraudulent but the the end product is whether or not you act, you know you have to have a good product uh, created through trial and error and, and and some kind of expertise in a field and and the people consuming that material have to execute it on it so but i would say 80 percent of what we do not us but our industry is all economic efficiency loss it's all bullshit because nobody's really serious well that's what i was saying it's like you ever notice how bitcoin gurus always have new courses coming out if bitcoin's going up as soon as it goes down everybody disappears <laughs> or in a recession how well, many businesses go out of business during Charlie a recession? Miguel are on top of their game but yeah i do see that quite a bit now that i've got into that space yeah it's the one joke i make is that you're uh the guru economy you never trust somebody who's only had it during a bear economy or bull bull which one's the good one bulls bull bull economy. Bull. yeah bull. never trust a guru in a bull economy Hmm. we'll see though like i said and it's this is not going to be about like vetting your gurus i'm more focused on the individual because mm-hmm. every guy in this chat i guarantee have all had and some of the guys i've heard it they've had stories of like i used to love you know uh who can i throw under the bus here coach greg adams he was the greatest thing ever and now i only watch you rollo because i realize he's a fucking moron or you know <laughs> you guys have all seen these stories on here he's right and moron. so that he's means there's a in the sense that like he got into uh he 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 know he saw a niche and he jumped into that niche like, yeah but, Samuels, but without the expertise of it right Samuels as well he saw a yeah. niche and he jumped into that niche right same thing with uh jordan peterson jordan peterson just blundered into his stardom like the only reason anybody knew his name yeah. is because he 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 refused to use like gender pronouns, pronouns as far back as like 2017. that's yeah. the only thing that put him on the map and in fairness to him though at least you can see that like he's a clinical psychologist so coming in talking about health of men you can at least see that connection, but somebody is like coaching girls basketball and like, you know what? I'm going to make real men now because I've been making 14 year old girls jump higher for the last 10 years. Well, it's a, it's a, again, it's definitely <laughs> marketing is getting into this click funnel marketing kind of thing. It's like, I, you know, I, I don't point fingers, but there's a lot of guys in the sphere. Like I, I made a, an issue. I think you and I were on the same issue or on the same Probably. episode when I was talking about how as far back as I think it was like 2018 or so you saw all these guys coming into the sphere and you're like, what the fuck are these guys doing? Well, they're, they're following a template marketing plan. Like if you look at the guys for what was this 33 secrets or coach Greg Adams or, or, or you can even put, you can throw Joker into that as well. And now Joker has a little bit extra value, I think, but when they first came in, it was like, okay, what's hot. What can I talk about? What's, what's trending? What's a tag? Oh, MGTOW. These guys came in as MGTOW. But there, I don't. I would. I would wonder. <laughs> Elliot Hulse. <else. laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Didn't even El- know what MGTOW yeah. was. He's like, yeah, I Hulse like going like, my own way. <laughs> Elliot Hulse was like, he was his own personality. He was on his own, like you know, brand yeah. of me long before we ever encountered him. And then he wanted to turn into a MGTOW because he thought MGTOW was something other than what it actually was, right? Mm-hmm. And um, and so we had to kind of like school him a little bit when it comes to like you know, the, the, well, this is really what it's about, blah blah blah. But see, at that about right about that time, actually, uh, Ryan was when uh, you saw all these guys coming into the sphere, and they were starting channels, and they had multiple channels, and they had multi. And, and to their credit, I mean, they made a, a living off of it, made a name off of it. But when they came into it, it was like they wanted to be MGTOW. I would, you, I think, you would be hard pressed to have these guys tell you that they're MGTOWs now, or that they're Black Pill now, because that's got a stink to it now. So and, it's almost like uh, feminists. You know, they don't call themselves are, feminists anymore because they sound bitchy. We're, we're like four or five years since then. 
So when you, I, I would, like I said, I think you would be hard pressed to get these guys who came in, you know, around 2017, 2018 and called themselves MGTOW. And now they're kind of like, eh, yeah, they're leaning away from, they're much more red pill than they were then, but they jumped mm -hmm. into it because they, they, it was, uh, the grift actually was the point rather yeah. than like, let's like, you know, this is what I've been doing for forever. So it's, it, it's kind of like talking about what, what, what Aaron said is like a lot of the guys who have, I think anyways, who offer the most value are guys who already had something going on for themselves before they came in to making YouTube and the, you know, their, their, oh, yeah. their Clary's had that on their, a few videos. Main, now. You know, their main, it's, it, the side hustle became their main hustle. Yeah. It was an accident and, and I'm kind of in defense of Joker and Greg M and Kevin Samuels. I mean, I, I don't have any reservations with them because like they all were men before this, this came along. Joker was in the military and he was an it guy. Uh, Coach Greg, I, I don't know his particular. He uh, was an Air Force, was he? Like he was a real service. Greg or uh, uh, Joker. Joker? Joker was Air Force, yeah. And he, he oh, was that's a bouncer. Yeah, he worked. He's he, there's, <laughs> I, well, now I got a shit on him because I'm just at the Air Force. <laughs> of Come on, of course, right? The Air Force. Your name but tag anyways. with the first name on it, wearing your no. wallet on your head. Fuck that. <laughs> anyway, but I'd rather take these guys than nobodies who just came off the street like you couldn't look up oh dude was in the military was a bouncer uh yeah, was i mean they have, they have a background for they sure. have a background yeah. right and and the other mm -hmm. thing is age and they and here's another thing i like it they admit they weren't successful that they did fail mm -hmm. they did lose in the ring a couple times not oh look at me i'm this i'm i'm the I'm second really coming sad. of christ i'm perfect i'm the new <laughs> jesus christ i get laid all the time you know, there's they're real heroes that they bleed. Won. Yeah, so they're believable. So I I don't I don't really have any reservations about it. It's just yeah. uh I'm, well, I'm I'm more go ahead, Ryan. Well, I was just gonna say more to the point. So I got Dante, he's one of the mods in the chat here. Awesome guy. This is kind of where I'm going with this. You see, is good example for him. It was Peterson, then I think that's life math money, then Rolo, then the rule zero, then me. When I said no, I feel guilty, and now he's out of it, right? So there's a process there. People follow Peterson as like dad 2.0. And then dad 2.0 and then gets to Rolo and starts to like, starts to think for himself, rule zero, starts to see other guys thinking for themselves and then me and that. And at the end of it, now he's thinking for himself. He doesn't need a, a Michael Jordan poster on his wall, mm -hmm. somebody to look right. up to. <laughs> so my, the reason that I, I did this as a topic is like, this would be a great thing as a value add, like real value, not that shitty ad to speed up this process of going from following dad 2.0 to dad 2.0 as quickly as possible to get in mental point of origin. And I think it's like a, because it's not lucrative. Nobody does it here. I'm going to help you not deal yeah. with me online ever again. Nobody's going to make that pitch. There's no marketing funnel for here's how you ignore me. Cause yep. you got your shit together. Mm. But, but I'm like, problem? why don't we kill this industry? That's my biggest point of pride is when people tell me I used to watch all this bullshit, but now I don't anymore because of you. And I'm like mm -hmm. cast iron pan, baby. <laughs> But that's progress. They yeah. they can't. They didn't dwell. They moved on. You know, mm -hmm. I I got what I needed. I moved on, and 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 off yes. we go and, and and live. So that's a good. Yeah, but thing. Dante switched on. There's a lot of guys who have potential, but just aren't. They just wallow for it's too long. It's hard to unplug. That's... It's hard to really unplug for yeah. a lot of guys. It's the 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 story that you're told and how it's supposed to work is so appealing. It's really hard for some guys to let go. No oh, matter yeah. how much they process and understand the red pill, they, they're, they're still plugged in a little bit. That's what I figure. But the way I see it is like, Rolo, mm -hmm. you can get a guy who's the biggest blue pilled simp for a chick, you know, baby mama, three kids, half of alimony, all that, all that shit. And you can walk him through the concept of hypergamy, of alpha bucks and beta bucks, mm -hmm. and he can change his mental models to fit a better reality for himself, right? He processes mm -hmm. things in a more healthy way. Mm -hmm. So we can do this for chicks. We just need to do this now for guys that are desperately looking for a father, the lost boy types, the ones with potential. Cause there's some that's just like, he's fucking far gone. Get away from him before he rents a van and starts driving through downtown Toronto. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, if we, if we could sell a pill that gave you money, muscles and game, people would line up around the block to, to, to buy it from you, whether or not yeah. they would take it or would do whatever they had to do to <laughs> actually it do box. it. Is, yeah, exactly. I mean, seriously, you could make it as easy as possible for guys and they would still like, oh, I don't know. Is this really the real pill? I thought it was going to act. I thought it was going to uh, be instantaneous. You mean I got to take more of these pills? You know, it's <laughs> and seriously, it's, it's that process side of things. 
But um, it, I, I, again, get, getting back to what uh, Fitch was saying just a second ago is that um, it's it going through that process is the hardest part. Like, again, I keep I keep harping on the too long didn't read generation. They want instant fixes. Like I was saying before, they want the template. They want the nine. That's why everybody fixates on the nine iron rules. That's why everybody fixates on 12 rules for life. That's why everybody fixates on whatever, you know, and put, put the number on there. That's why, by the way, Cappy, that's why they like the book of numbers <laughs> because it's something that they go, oh, here's some hard data. Here's some things that I can do. Whether or not they actually put that into practice oh god no use that to change their life in any no. meaningful way is really up to the up to the student as you were saying the 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 onus of education is not on the teacher it's on the student so the student has to be the one who actually does the work who actually educates themselves and then decides okay is this teacher full of shit or is this teacher somebody that i'm actually you know gaining something from or i'm building something from and so when you when you take that and then you see that they're they want that instant you know you're selling them the the 12 rules for life you're selling them the plan this the 12 step to get a better life but that's not enough it has to be instantaneous it has, it has to, to be, be convenient and easy you know uh it's you know. almost like they don't want to win so they keep putting barriers yeah. in front as an excuse why it won't win and it's not their fault yeah. when it fails well, nobody, got time for that. nobody got time for that man <laughs> seriously they they want they want instantaneous gratification and if you don't give it to them you're a fraud you're a charlatan you promised me a perfect life if i followed these steps and i don't have that perfect life and uh it didn't the, the pill didn't work rollo I'm like i'm that's why i don't sell prescriptions that's why i don't say follow these simple steps and you'll have a great life when people say rollo how did you get a how did you get a a, a wife and a kid and how do you you know how do you get uh, the life that you had and go you can't i'm not going to sell you that program because you're not me the girl you're going to meet is not my wife and your situation and your the concept better not be is way different <laughs> than mine i can point you in the right direction i can show you the stats yeah. i can give you the chilton manual to the, yeah. to the red pill but i'm not going to be the one to hold your hand and say do this and you'll live a better life you have to do that guess what children you're responsible for your own life so <laughs> well, and see, here's one Oh, sorry, this is clear. I'm tying this. I'm sending okay. this right over to you, too. All right. All right. This is so common. It's got to be evolved. And that's what I'm trying to figure out. And Claire, oh, I'm curious your thoughts on this. Case in point, uh, CIOs, if you've ever been in a company, the, the head of the tech, their job is almost ceremonial. So when something goes, because nobody ever fixes uh, vulnerabilities. And then when a big hack happens, they fire the CIO or like scapegoats. Remember that? They used to sacrifice a goat for all the sins of the villages were given off. And then finally, Jesus is like, all right, no more goats. You can have my kid, but no more. But you see what I mean? Like, and then the guru, like, I want Jordan Peterson as my dad 2.0. And then he starts doing diazepams or whatever. They're like, yeah, fuck Jordan Peterson. But and then they're on to the next guy. Or the case. I wish they were saying, fuck Jordan Peterson. They're well, not. A lot of guys were. They're like, oh, how dare you? He, he had a rough life and his wife had cancer. And so they'll make up anything to defend the, their investment in that guy. That's what I'm saying. But yeah, but that's my question. Do you guys, there's got to be some kind of beneficial evolved trait for this need to put a leader in front and then scapegoat all the problems onto them to absolve yourself. Is there one? Is there an economic principle well, yeah. that kind of well, describes it's not an this economic process? Economic principle. It's it's avoiding it's 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 pride. It's ego protection. Uh, you don't want to live like <clears throat> everyone here has done something wrong, and you're ashamed of it. And if you're actually true to yourself, you're like God. I really hurt that person or did something wrong, and you feel bad. You you probably feel really shitty, frankly. Like mm -hmm. I didn't live up to my own standards. Um, I, I hurt another fellow human being. That's assuming you're even to that point of uh, uh, thinking of other people. Uh, and to avoid that pain, people want to believe in this world that they didn't do anything wrong and nothing is their fault. They want to abdicate responsibility to avoid that pain. Also running congruent or very closely to that is people want to believe in this world where they don't have to work. I cannot emphasize, this is where economics will come in, I cannot emphasize how powerful the force of laziness is, where people <laughs> don't want to work at all. So they want to avoid responsibility, or more so the pain that comes with, I'm. it's, it's my own fault that I'm fat or disgusting or whatever, I hurt somebody. They also want to avoid any kind of responsibility of work and labor and toil that is required for success. And so they're going to constantly search yet never put the effort into some kind of guru and message that gives them this impossible thing, this impossible reality. 
where you guys remember the secret that book the secret oh yeah that's the epitomal example mm. where if you just think good thoughts good things will yep. happen yep. you know and and they'd rather live in that uh cognitive dissonant state of comfort <laughs> and pain avoidance and doritos and porn <laughs> and whatever else then actually one admit you were wrong Two, if you're courageous enough, ask for forgiveness. Three, get off your ass and go do something. And so as, as per what Rolla was saying before, I can only, it's not even tell you what to do, but like, here's a roadmap. I think it's even what we, if we could simplify it a little bit more, what we're largely doing is so much misinformation has been pumped into everyone's minds, starting going back to the 1960s, I'd say. All we do is remove the BS, metaphor taking the right. We remove the BS, here's the real world. And we might provide some advice or roadmap as to how to navigate. And mine's obviously financial roles is actually a, more a, a female dynamic. Fitch fighting. Ryan, you're a great guy. Uh, but anyway, it's- I can't believe I said I liked your shirt. <laughs> I lied right to your face. And this is what I get for my troubles. <laughs> Fucking hell. But so we're like, hey, here's the BS. We had to figure this out on our own. And the only thing I could say that would solve most of these guys' problems, because everyone's different. I said, well, here's some things you can do. Here's some universal things you can do, but otherwise you got to figure it out yourself. About the only thing I could say that will get you to the point that you're actually going to be satisfied is self supportation That's it. When you stop living at home, when you stop living off the government, when you stop needing a subsidy, when you stop needing whatever form, when you are a truly independent man or woman, you will have gone through the trials and tribulations and you will have become your own person. And you will not be, you know, I got all these clients. My, I'm 23 and my parents won't help me. I, I, I got to live at home to make ends meet. But they're kind of, I said, you live at home. Fuck you. You're their bitch. <laughs> you get to live in their room. Yeah. Fucking Christ, 100%. 24. I built my first fucking house at 24. I lived in a basement, but I. it's like until you support yourself, then the, then what you want out of the world ultimately doesn't matter. Isn't and that the I way it's supposed to work too? Your parents have to be so miserable to you that you have to move out? Well, right, but but my, my point is Probably to show- a good thing you never had kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, 18, get out. Daddy wants to bang mom on the get kitchen. Hell are you doing here, yeah, son? Get the fuck out of my house. Daddy, goodbye. Have fun in the military. <laughs> see you on Christmas. Uh, but uh, my larger point is, is for those who wish to be practical, it's I, I don't know your individual situation. I don't know religious or philosophical situation, but I can tell you this. The the secret or the key or the path is to become self-sustaining self-supporting then you become you own your own life and now you can just do whatever you want whatever that may be and we have some rules like don't get married mm -hmm. wear protection get a vasectomy whatever it is. but aside from these general rules of what not to do it's all you man and they're so lazy they say they come up to me. Do I major in mechanical engineering or electrical engineering? It's like show me how to live, Uncle. Do I, do I stick my dick in her ass or I stick it in her hoo-ha? What do I do? I don't know. It's and my answer is, if you have to ask that question, you might as well be dead. Mark you that. Are, certainly, you might as well even be trying it. Like it doesn't matter if you choose nuclear engineering or stick your dick in her mouth or what. Because if you have to have someone else be, you are so lazy and hopeless. You're not even human. You're not alive. You're an NPC. So go consume the Doritos and go do what society and media tells you. And and th by the way, thank you for the hundred fifty dollars of time. consulting fee. E like yeah, like and and it's until you that the baptism by fire where you pay your own rent you become a genuine fucking adult that's the only thing we can really give you guys but by god by golly here comes well endowed miley for every <laughs> one of us that's trying to tell these guys that that general path go forth do your own thing there's nine guys oh here's here take the aspo cream and do this and hey you, you know here are the 10 secrets because they don't want the solution they want the easy treatment to make the pain go away. I, and, I will notice. And there's so much money to, to make that way. So that that's kind of the bifurcated or dualopolistic mm -hmm. market we have right now.
I was wondering if this is kind of tying into that men raised as defective women <clears> thing, because <throat> I was dating a girl it used to be like this. Actually, most were, but this one particularly. It was always little decisions like going out to dinner. What do you want to do? Going to this party? What do I want to wear today? And she would never make a decision because she was worried about making the wrong decision. And it's weird. And I don't know if it's a feminine thing. Rolo, maybe you can help me out on this. Or maybe it's just a human thing. I feel like it's a feminine thing. Yeah, but you know, like there's not a binary right, wrong decision. In most things in life, the answer is like, yes, no, maybe. There is no, this is the right one. This is the wrong one. There's no single path through life. So generally speaking, if you have to flip a coin between two spots, either decision is going to be fine. It's going to come with its own trade-offs. It's going to come with its own successes. One may be more successful here. The other one may be more successful there. But like there is no wrong decisions, yet people are terrified of making a wrong decision. Yeah. Do you feel what I'm saying with this? Yeah. yeah I blah, 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 mumble. Put, uh, put that, uh, put Glenn Lawrence's uh, a super chat up real quick because that's oh, where yeah. I was going. Thank Thank you very much, Glenn. 999. Yeah, lack of accountability plus lack of responsibility is part of the problem. No, most definitely. But how did we get to that point is what I – and and just sort of uh, dovetails into what you were talking about, Ryan. Um, how did we get to this point? Like I, I joke around with, with, with Cappy all the time. It's like we've gotten to the point right now where like common sense is so fucking rare you can commercialize it. <laughs> you it's can ask – Assholeconsulting.com. You know, you know, clickbait kind of thing, you know, because it's so – people don't – as you were saying, you know, hold my hand, show me how to live kind of thing. And I think that the reason why we're there, as I was saying before, we live in the, 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 you know, the TLDR generation and we want instant gratification. We want instant solutions to our problems. We want to, and, and if we can't, we'll buy the, the program, never follow through with it, but our brains will think that we have already solved that problem because we made the purchase. How do we get to that point? And I, I'm going to, I was actually saving this for my show tomorrow, but I'll, I'll give you a preview here. Nice. Um, are you guys familiar with a, a I guess, his, I think he's a neuroscientist. He's, he's been around, he's made the rounds. Uh, Andrew uh, Huberman is what his name. I, I hope I'm saying his name right. Um, I've seen him interviewed a few times, and so the guy's a you know a bona fide you know neuro neuroscientist kind of guy, and he was pointing out the fact that we've never lit in human history we've never lived in an era where uh, satisfying pleasures for human beings has been more immediate and more easy to to get right. So if you want to get off, you got 4K streaming porn whenever you want to, right? Even if it's virtual, your brain doesn't know, your mind doesn't know any different. You're just you're just getting off to imagery, and you have access to a virtual sexuality that used to be reserved for like, you know. Uh, Chinese emperors in the Forbidden City or Caligula, you know, I mean, that's a you know, 12 year old kid has more access to like sexual material than Caligula did back in the day. Right. So there's that aspect. Then there's food. Why are we all fat asses, Aaron? Because we have access to high calorie food. I'm a buck 45. What are you, I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying that's one of your that's one of your things. Man. And th why is there? Why are we like we talked about this before? Why is there a, a, an, a morbidly obese woman on the cover of Sports Illustrated is swimming? suit edition why is that because we're trying to normalize that because we don't want to give up our food we don't want to give up that pleasure we want to change the game so that we don't have to make any we don't have to make any investment in ourselves. and I, I believe it was andrew heberman who was saying this he was saying that uh we've never lived in a time and those are just like you know we, we go, run down what is it the seven deadly sins right pride avarice you know all that stuff all of that is immediately tied to some sort of personal pleasure right so when you're looking at um, when you're looking at gluttony, you're looking at lust, whatever. We've never made it easier to indulge in those, you know, the, which are you know translate into human wants for for particular pleasures, right? And we have never in human history had that immediacy to get to those things. Back in the day, before the internet and all, you know, online streaming, 4K porn, whatever, you had to actually go out there and bust your ass to get laid. You had to get married to get laid in, in most cases, right? Yeah, um, and even if you did, hard. like, we, I think what's funny is I, I've, I've been recently challenged on, like, the uh, how many, well, notch count, right? Female promiscuity and everything else. I, I, people hit me up and they go, oh, it's not as much as you think it is, Rolo. It's, you know, those those numbers are skewed. It's those ratchet chicks in, in Miami. <laughs> it's like, I'm like. It's no, the Eloy, not the Morlocks. It, 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 no, it's not. But the other thing is, we again, we live in an era where we can have and we can have ratchet girls in in Miami, right? I mean, we can we can glorify that, and we can we can get them into a positive feedback loop where we're giving them attention, which is pleasure, uh, you know, pride or or vanity, whatever. I forget which deadly sin that particular one is, but we can feed into that, and we it's never been more immediate. And so what happens is you have. Um, 
you have this cycle that takes place where you've got guys where, you know, we caught, we want to talk about women's hubris and, and, and uh, we want to talk about how it, their, uh, what is it? Social media feeds into uh, that, that need for ego in you know, a, a inflation, let's just say for women. And at the same time, what that does is there's a, there's a reciprocal um, uh, effect on men because men are becoming more and more sedated and women are becoming more and more hubristic. And they become uh, prideful. They're becoming more and more entitled to the high value guy. While at the same time, we're, we're sedating men with the pleasure of pornography. You don't have to go out there and do it. You don't have to put the effort out to do anything. You don't have to put any effort to go from, or at least perceptually, you don't have to put any effort into going from a white belt to a black belt. You don't have to put in the 10,000 hours that you need to do to attain mastery in anything. And that's the problem that we're having right now. Why bother? That's why you have MGTOW. That's why you have black pill guys. Why bother? My pleasures are immediate. I can have whatever the hell I want with the minimum amount of effort and energy. And if I can't and I feel like I have a problem, then I can buy the solution from gum road or you know some you know uh, i don't know get get together some war room or whatever the hell yeah. it is i didn't know well, what to call it but i can go and i can get that solution if i go and i put the money down and i can at least you know uh vicariously feel like i've solved that problem this goes all up the food chain though too it's not just gum road guys think about the you know how university yeah. right now has an a cheating epidemic and not just like bachelor degrees we're talking like doctors lawyers i guess cheating is so bad and there was a guy he just had an article about that where he caught literally 100 percent of his students cheating and he goes why it's an open book exam i go through all the material it's here online you can just type control f and search for it but they're still cheating on the exams being paid. And then what was lazy. his result lazy, lazy. Well, that's the thing, but there's no incentive not to because he's like, yeah, you're supposed to report them for this, but he made this big convoluted pan so they could salvage their careers and all this. And you just realize it's like nobody's accountable to anything anymore. And that's why you're seeing all these professional doctors talking about, you know, it's going to get banned, but whatever, mm -hmm. like a vaccine that's got what a 7% efficacy rate and talking about it like it's the second coming of Christ or how they're put like. I'm a clinical psychologist. So let me tell you about the war in Ukraine, all these weird non experts. Right. <laughs> and it's easy to see when it's gumroad dudes talking about the masculine excellence shit. But it's also easy to see that there's doctors that can't doctor lawyers who can't lawyer Chesty said so himself real zero or real zero dead. During the Humber Heard trial, there's so many lawyers on YouTube now making money doing that. And he goes all of their legal opinions were horrible. This is why they didn't pass the bar. And there's tons of them. It's just everywhere. Mm -hmm. We're fucked. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I think it's also the idea that we can attain instant mastery. It's we're, we don't live in the matrix. You can't upload. I, I know kung fu, right? You, that doesn't happen. You have to be able to actually go through that. I, I try to stress this too. You're, you're gonna have to actually get punched in the face a few times. Well, I, I I've stressed this in the yeah. past. It's like I'm yeah. not hmm. I'm not a get rich quick guy. I'm a get rich slow guy. And there's yeah. a reason for that, because uh, as you've heard me say this before, too much, too young, too fast. The same thing happened, I, I believe, with Kevin Samuels. I think the same thing happened with uh, Jordan Peterson. I see it happening with a lot of other guys. In fact, when I remember when Fresh and Fit were first coming up and Fresh was, you know, was asking for advice and saying, what should I look out for? I said, too much, too young, too fast. That was the first thing out of my mouth. I said, because you have to go through a process of becoming rich and becoming to getting to that point where you have to pay your dues. And there's a process of learning so that you can learn discernment and judgment. It, it, you will be a different person at the end of that get rich slow low program as opposed to oh somebody just threw you know four million dollars in my lap and i'm going to use that to enable my alcoholism or i'm going to use that to enable my drug addiction or i'm going to use that to uh, you know uh the, the, the things that you had in your past if maybe it's prescription opioids or something like that that's just going to follow you into your new life where you are now a millionaire because you was it was too much, too young, too fast. Now, the young part is just inexperience in this case. But like when you take a, a young athlete and you, uh, you put him in the NFL draft, and he's a number one draft choice. Suddenly he goes from being this 21 year old kid who's playing college football, who grew up in the inner city and had like, you know, two nickels to rub together. And now you put millions in his in his lap. Yeah, that's that's when guys flame out or like, uh, you know, rock stars, for example, they go from nothing to having all kinds of you know, groupies and everything they ever wanted. And that's when they get drug addictions and they commit suicide or they OD or whatever else. That's the that's the principle of it. 
I think we're in a time right now where we had again we have never had access so so immediate access to pleasures in the same way and we just don't put in the time to attain the mastery that we need so that we can actually make good decisions and we don't kill ourselves and we don't have to go to rehab and we don't have to do these things and that's the problem right now is, as uh, Andrew Kuberman was saying is that we have such immediacy in our pleasure satisfaction that we don't even think about like, oh, this is going to take me. I got I got to take Cappy's uh, uh, minimalism course. How long is that? Can I just buy it and then be a minimalist? Then suddenly, uh, magically, all the things in my house will disappear and I'll be living a, a more Spartan lifestyle. No, it's, you have to actually learn it and go through it and go through the process. Again, white belt to black belt. You can't just give a guy a black belt and say, here you go. Jump in the ring. You know, you'll get killed. You'll be dead. Because you but didn't. that's just it. Nobody's killing people anymore. It, yeah. Metaphorically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I guess a uh, quick stop here. Future MD, $10 super chat. Thank you very much, sir. Fail fast analysis paralysis screws you up the most. Fail fast and adjust. Thanks to Ryan for the OODA loop conversations. And Absolutely, what is that? sir. That is observe, orient, orient decide, and act. Decide and act. That's right. I always so get it's an Air orient. Force thing. It's, it's the really orient part. I was going to ask if that's a nice little military acronym. It is. Yeah. yeah, but here's the thing. It's uh, you guys calibration. You guys have heard the term before and pick up circles, right? It's mm -hmm. the same thing. Observe something that happens. Things. Yeah. Orient yourself to a solution, make a decision and then act on it. And then you fail often early. I like exactly. To to that in training, mm -hmm. when you start learning a technique, you know, you just drill it until it becomes something that you can perform smoothly, but then you have to start doing it in a live situation. Yeah. And uh, you don't get better at that technique and you won't be able to apply that technique unless you're actually doing that live situation yeah. over and over and over again. Act. And where you can make <laughs> the adjustments to make it work right. Exactly. But you see what I mean? Like we all have, there's all these answers are there and multiple spheres have come up with it. It's converging evidence. It's just funny. We've been ranting about this for three years and there's still guys are like, yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather join that war room. Mm -hmm. They look pretty cool with their Bugatti. And yes, I'm throwing shade, and why not? Tom, thanks for the $5 super chat. What's good about all the lackluster professionals is like how 80% of the guys are overweight. Success is much easier, low competition. I mean, he's not wrong. The fact that you're if you fail at this point, it's like, who do you have to blame at this point? All you got to do is, is not be fat. All you got to do is make a decent living. All you got to do is just pass the open book exam without cheating. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we do. I think we do the manosphere and the I don't know whatever we're calling it the male self improvement sphere. Let's just say, it sounds much nicer. Such it's a kinder, gentler manosphere. Um, I think we do the red pill and the manosphere, whatever, uh, a disservice if we don't make it for everyone. If we think if 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 to be a high retard is to be draped over a Lamborghini or and you know on a super yacht or flying your private planes wherever you are, if if that's what it is, that's uh, that doesn't resonate with the guy who's driving a tractor in you know. Oklahoma. I'm, I'm happy if you work hard, hard, level up, and you you buy your own trailer. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. Well, Can you put a trailer on a Lambo. I, 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 this has been my my hit for a little while. And, if you read um if you read my fifth book I, I i put this in the introduction it's like the red pill game whatever has to be for the every man or it's for no man and so the guy who's living in a village in you know somewhere in brazil or or you know i don't know argentina or some shit like that if if that guy can't relate to the red pill what use is it you know mm. maybe that guy's the alpha of his village he doesn't own a lamborghini but he's the badass of that village and the principles the apply to him contextually within that you know that environment and that socioeconomic strata yeah i agree all right and last one here angry in a region 13 ten dollars super chat thank you sir death of consequences leads to the death of competence mm -hmm. i actually talked about this in mind before the the cheap and easy economy how everything now is i think i was telling you guys was it offline or online i was talking about the mp3 effect or the mp3ification offline yeah no, mm -hmm. oh yeah so it's everything student cheap. at uh teacher at Very berkeley cheap. music school he was doing this study about MP3, and he would show students music from MP3 formats, lossless formats, live, all different things. And MP3s, you know, they're kind of staticky. They're very tinny. They're a little thinner. Rolo, you know music. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. The part that he found was funny was that MP3 allows you to share music way faster, but it makes it a sacrifice in quality. But the part he noticed was that every year, more people started to say they preferred the MP3 sounds to, like, 
actual live music. Mm -hmm. Coca-Cola, same thing. Like the Queen of England, Marilyn Monroe, and Buddy in the Dust Bowl all drink the same thing. But Coke is kind of like, it's just cheap sugar water, right? There's mm -hmm. much better drinks you can make at home, but that makes effort. Or I won't even do the chocolate one. But you know what I mean? Is this one of those situations where the there's no, like you said, people aren't dying for failure anymore. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are like, you know what? It's just cheaper and easier. I can do this Gumroad course, feel better about myself, still stumble my way through life. And then people start to prefer it in the same way that they prefer MP3s over real music. Right. Ease. You, yeah. You have ease laziness. Part of it. Right. Like yeah. how so many people, let me, let me ask you guys this, hmm. like, all right, now I, I presume we all prefer a good grilled steak. <laughs> we did, we seasoned it our own way. We don't assume yeah. we're all, yeah, I, I'm going to assume we're all competent enough to grill. It our takes own too steak. long. I'm going to go to the store. Right. That's what I was going to yeah, ask. What percent no. of the pap, like, let's say you zero cost, like you don't have to go to make, you don't have to pay for the Big Mac, but you also don't have to pay for your steak. You just got to either go get it or grill it up. I almost guarantee you 70% of the uh, Western population would go get the Big Mac rather than grill their own steak. And that's basic economics too, isn't it? Uh, the What's it, specialization or whatever? Well, no, and it's not even specialization. I mean, yeah, there is specialization, but I like think- Like if you can going... earn more money doing work and then you go buy the hamburger, that's much better time spent well, than well, making your steak. Well, you're overcomplicating. You're, over you're assuming people are smart enough to calculate opportunity cost. All right. Yeah. I, I, which, okay, so let's, let's just leave it. I think this is going more beyond economics to the simple philosophy or maybe even mental illness where, dude, you could have a really good grilled steak with all the seasoning in the way you want it if you took the half an hour to marinate it and grill it and pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. I think people are so lazy and they're so work avoidant that mm -hmm. any inconvenience isn't necessarily super painful. It's just so much easier to go and do it that way. And I'm trying to think, like, wasn't there a, a technology where it was just easier to do that and that became the platform? Am I confusing that with beta and VCR? Or there, there and I'm sure there are more. No, there theirs was one. quality versus porn. I think porn, yeah, porn's okay. the reason that every one. time. Right. Bet on porn. But, but, your but you're right, beta porn. was superior as a platform. All right. But mm -hmm. my larger point is we have become so uh afraid and unex uh, unexposed to just work not even painful toil just like running an errand you know get, doing a little bit of your own food prep that i guarantee you 70 percent of westerners would rather just have uber eats deliver a sonic burger which are fine by the way mm -hmm. than you spend the time to make a, a really good grilled dish on on your grill right and and your mastery of the grill your grill master right but that took a little bit of albeit fun work Mm -hmm. uh, but what I'm what I'm kind of fearing right now uh, is what we want the satisfaction. We want uh, to feel good. I wouldn't say it's just to get it necessarily a dopamine hit, but technology has made it so much easier for us to get th these things met and, and, and satisfied and get these dopamine hits. Mm -hmm. Yet at the same time, what's the number one thing we ultimately want? Certainly, what's the number one thing guys want? So how do they come here? They want what? Pussy. They want girls, the girls, they, the girls, they want other people, even in a status sense. They oh, I want to be recognized that I got status and all that. But they don't realize that in going the cheap way out and ordering Uber Eats to deliver your Big Mac, rather than going out and becoming an individual that other people like, they're still choosing the other way and the false hope or the promise or the digitization of mm -hmm. other people like take a look at girls in instagram like they will go to the let's flip it i know we're critical of men let's flip it to the women Ooh. all these gals joker did a video i know you guys hate him i don't uh but he did a video where he's talking about how i think texas took down the filters on instagram or facebook because it was being <laughs> oh for facial recognition for facial recognition mm -hmm. and the girls went apoplectic and the reason why is that it was more important to them. The classic example, like, okay, on the internet, because it takes filters and things, I'll look like a 10. Whoa, real world? Like hit the gym and lose the weight? Absolutely not. <laughs> so what you're starting to see, it's, it's the choice. It's the ease. People would rather go live in a digital, false or, or in their own mind world where they're great and amazing and they're constantly getting this dopamine hit and I'm a beautiful girl on Instagram and that's all that matters, then actually be a pretty girl in the real world. 
And I think men are kind of the same way in their their own rights and regards. Do you remember that and Simpsons where Homer saw himself with his pecs and flexing in the mirror? Yeah, <laughs> that's all I'm thinking of right now. <laughs> but that's and it's a sad statement to humanity where that's the way we're going to go. We'd rather have the synthesized, digital, fake, cognitive dissonance, live in our own mind world of that it's we're great and pretty. And, yeah, metaverse. yeah, metaverse. Right, good way to put it, John. Okay, your escapism, your escapism is better is a better life than your shitty real life. The reality, better. right? And if we but can't it, we can't live that way in the real in the real world. Then we will try to tra change the game so that the rules, uh, you know, uh, are appropriate to our you know skill set. What and what makes it worse? And here's why everyone's miserable. Deep down inside you need or at least desperately want more than anything else the real deal you want the real mccoy you want that guy to like you you guys want that girl to commit to you but you're all too fucking lazy to do anything about it so you stay in this perpetual fake loop going to school oh i'm really smart because i have a, a phd in what journalism here suck my jizz all right it's it's just this bullshit, I haven't heard jizz in forever. bullshit. <laughs> well, my jizz is worth more than a master's degree. In yeah, uh, hey, Cappy, let me tag something onto the end of that tier too, because uh, I, I your opinions on jizz. <laughs> I, oh yeah, thanks. let me give you some opinions. <laughs> uh, let totally me tell you good. about jizz, um, son. No, I I I 100 agree with you, but I will I'll take that a step further. Uh, Cappy, you were mentioning you are uh, building your retaining wall this week. Is yeah, that what I got mean? a picture. Yeah, it looks great. Like nice and flat. Flat. Yeah. Do you um do you do your own landscaping? Like regularly? Yeah. Uh, I'm I mean, more or less. Do you yeah, mow your I mean, own lawn? I my, yeah, I mow my own lawn and I, okay. I put the, the gravel around. And I Why would you do that though? Why why bother? Can't you? Are, you're a loser because you uh, can't afford to have people do that for you. No. Your time is very valuable. How come you, how come you are doing that? Because only poor people would go and do their own landscaping. And yeah. therefore you should, you're a loser because you can't afford to have people do that for you. Mm -hmm. Yes, if we went back five to ten years ago, I would say it because I'm cheap and I'm frugal. That's the that's that's the we, it, it, we, I'm I'm making a point here is right. that that is the mentality right now because if you were so made, if you were such a badass, if you were so, you would not be building your own retaining wall. I would yesterday. I'll, I'll give you another example. Yesterday, I changed the headlights and the grill work on my Toyota Tacoma that is paid for. Thank you very much. Um, because I just wanted to put some new new. I want to put some you know the, the profits of wire fraud or I did it myself. I could have paid like it took me about four hours to do this shit. I learned how to do it online. Uh, you know because I, I watched some you know YouTube videos. I switched it out. It looks fucking great. I'll show. You, I'll actually put some pictures of on on my Instagram later. But I it took me about four hours to do it. I was listening. I was listening to uh, you know podcasts while I was doing it. But it was fun. I had I enjoyed it. I figured it out. I did it myself, and it looks badass. And I was like, this is great. But I could have paid four or $500 for a shop to do it, come back later on, picked up my car, and it would have been done for me, and I wouldn't get, like, you know, these... Dude, got, you could have done a live stream while I was doing it and paid but, for it. the guns of Navarone? Oh yeah, well, God. no, I got, I got a hickey for it, because like, you're reaching in and trying to get all this stuff out and all this stuff. But I did it on my own, but I'm a loser because I didn't pay $400 to have somebody else do it. And I could have used those four hours to go do another podcast or write another book or do with, do this or do that. And so therefore, because I did that and I learned a skill, I, I can probably do it for you guys. If you'd like, if you have Toyota Tacomas, um, mm. but I, I did that mm. not to save money, but because I wanted to fucking do that. Right. I take care of my, my lawn here. I don't have to do that. I do it because I want to. I do. Well, here, that. If we're gonna I've always done that. I've learned how to do that. But, you know, it's a I, I rent this place and I still take care of the landscaping because it's a point of pride for me. The problem is, is that people are it's like it's not You're talking about social about, status or social uh, about, signaling, but it's not exactly. It's not just about, um, you know, laziness, which it is, but it's not only about that. It's the fact that we flex on each other for our laziness for our lack of mastery. Dude. Well, if you were really uh, if you were really a good guru and you made as much money as you did, you wouldn't have to do your own landscaping. You wouldn't have to do the the, the manual labor that you did because you, uh, because nobody who's made would even think about the doing something like that. When's the last time you think like some of these, you know, rich ass gurus flying around in, in private jets have like fucking picked up the dog shit in the back of their yard in their backyard? Probably never. But I was thinking back to your Instagram, great example. You're talking about the Instagram filters and shit, John? Yeah. Have you ever seen those like New York fashionista types that dress like fucking trash, like the Dara Leak from Zoolander look? Yeah. 
That is a giant social flex. It's a girl dresses yeah. to make herself look as ugly as possible. It's like, I can still pick up any man in here when I'm wearing a fucking garbage bag. Meanwhile, there's some girl with her tits hanging out. It's like the rich tech guy, too, dressing yeah. in awful sweatpants and, mm -hmm. and Star Wars t-shirts and shit. He makes a million dollars a month, and he's dressed... Like yeah, and he doesn't know bum. how to boil like, water. Like or... the hobo. His, his <laughs> outfit where his outfit cost twelve hundred dollars, but he looks like the hobo <laughs> sleeping on the ground. Well, you know, and I think is, I, I, is, hey, do you guys know what Hello Fresh is? Like oh, they yeah. send you the food and you like prepare. They, they like, grocery shop for you and prep cook. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's like that's like that's the same thing, right? It's like they send you the shit. You're not actually cooking. You're just no. like following directions. But I think it. that's the difference. So back in the day, my and I could be wrong. People didn't do this stuff as a social flex, but they could. Like I could have yeah. landscaped my yard, but I'm gonna hire the Mexican immigrants to do it. Now yeah. I think people have kind of forgotten about that part of it, and they don't know how to do it. And so the flex has gone to a pathological incompetence. I'm curious but, if you guys think I'm onto something here, or if I'm a fucking idiot. But you're, you're, it's, it's a weird multi. Here's kind of the dynamic, uh, because we've told people now several generations they can do whatever they want. The main reason I did my own landscaping is because there's no one to do it. I mean, there are landscapers in Rapid City, but you have they are booked a year out. I'm like, mm -hmm. F that. I got to do it. My it has no, to get like, done. There's that's no neighborhood kid that's offering. No, there's no neighborhood. Well, and the kid. construction workers are fucking ridiculous. Well, and they're they're busy building multi the good ones are. Yeah, yeah. The good ones are. And and on top of it, the, the tradesmen out here are, are very low quality drunk cousin yeah. fuckers out here. So you don't bother. So you have to, you might as well do it yourself. All right. But some are like so rolling. On ML. We, I grew I grew up in a house where we we did everything ourselves. Like when we had to fix something or add an addition or do something to the house, like uncles came over mm -hmm. and did the work. You know, it was all all people who knew each other and we did shit our, ourselves. I still try to fix things myself. Myself I I uh I just had broke my laptop and fixed I changed the screen out myself. Nice. I'm very proud of that. So like yeah, I'm I'm used to doing things myself. But it was that was one thing that my ex we had problems with was I could tell she was like looking down her nose at me because like I I mowed the lawn. Like I <laughs> took care of the pool and it, you know for a little bit and took care of the outside and the backyard and the landscaping. I was doing it all myself and she just I could tell she did not like the fact that I was like getting my hands dirty doing but let, like, let me work. Let me show some about internally conferred value versus externally conferred value. For, and this is a perfect example. And this is why right here, right now, we're all richer than any rich person, whether that's a tech guru or some, yes. some lazy Democrat welfare collecting sponge who doesn't have to work. Fucking liberals. When you do something, whether it's something as simple as fixing the lights on your car or putting in a retaining wall or, or landscaping your yard or, or whatever else have you, you get to look at it and say, Look, I did that. Like, I'm real proud of my retaining wall, right? And after you make a certain amount of money and you don't need that much money, and I'm not talking like master millions of dollars. Like once you got your food, clothing, and shelter taken care of, right? It's like, okay, well, where do I drive? What should I do? When you actually do something, it's like I created it. I brought this into existence. And whether or not somebody appreciates it or not, you appreciate it because you know you did that. What do these people have that live – in what would otherwise be a, the metaverse you didn't make your own you didn't put in your own fence posts your degree is is a joke it didn't land you a job you're super rich let's say you're super rich and you outsourced it to the mexicans to do your roof or whatever you didn't do that like at by the end of the day who are you how are you defined and how you derive value and if your if your value is oh i showed my titties on the internet or i i provide some class, and by the way I don't it's a scalable industry. Well, but here's internet the thing. tits. I, I, don't, I have never shown my tits on the internet. <laughs> I don't believe for a second anywhere near the people are making the money they claim to be making on the internet. Oh, they're not. I, it, it, yeah, because I've I've worked in banking. I've seen people's financial statements. It's all bullshit. It's all fake. So these people aren't even making it. So now they have the added financial stress of having to fake it until they make it or <clears throat> never make it and being frauds. They don't even have, I cleaned my toilet bowl or I grilled my steak. They don't even got that. All they got is I jerked off to this porn. I was stimulated in this way. I got mm -hmm. to this next level on yeah. this video game. Like you and can you're even, living paycheck to paycheck to I prove to people game. that you did it. Or you're on welfare or living off your parents and living in their basement. It's the classic example. Like 
I painted my own miniatures. Isn't that cool? I, I painted my miniatures versus I'm living vicariously as Agnarok, the barbarian, and my character <laughs> got killed. I'm going to kill myself. The, it is to Agnarok. simply do stuff in the real world that has some kind of tangible value, whether that could be writing a book or redoing your driveway or what would be considered beneath it. That gives you more reward. Value. If you don't get to that point, because you got to get flash and cash and the clothes and a fancy car and you got to borrow the money to do it. That's a life of misery and that you'll never be happy. You'll never be happy. But that's what you people are following. A lot of these people are following. The, oh, they got a Ferrari. I got to follow. Oh, he, he posed. by. They're, they're following thing. the social flex, missing the underlying thing, which I meant before. Like, I don't know how to cook. It's not that I'm flexing, but I'm not cooking. Well, here's here's my segue for your rant because I know it's going to carry into this anyway. The necessity of competence. You're talking about this yourself. Mm. Yeah, you can flex by not doing your own yard work or doing your own car. But we've been talking before how everybody now is not getting any consequences for failure and they're becoming competent. Like you said, every construction worker, lazy, drunk, useless. Like my girl was, remember that when I had the picture of her on Instagram with the jackhammer tiling our floor while I'm doing a podcast on masculinity? <laughs> <laughs> but, but my point is, it's not that we wanted to, it's we actually tried to hire somebody to do it, but everybody was coming in at an insane cost. Everybody was drunk. Nobody, like people didn't even return the calls. Like, hey, right. we want to pay you $5,000 to tile 100 square feet. Nobody even returned the call. So we eventually had to do it. And I'm thinking, you're talking, yeah, I'm doing it because I enjoy it. John's like, I'm doing it because that's what we were trained. With this hyper incompetence coming around, are we really going to have a choice at this point? Are you going to have to no. be self-sufficient because you, nobody I, else can do it for you, even if you did pay them? My next book is going to be an addendum to Bachelor Pad Economics because this is the labor market is changing where you are going to have to be self-sufficient in so many different ways and the, the consequences of that. Yeah, the return uh, of the Renaissance, man. Right, right. But, uh, but to answer your question, yes, that is going to have consequences. Um, but it's, it really, you know, what is agency? What is purpose? I don't know if you guys ever read Victor Frankl's, uh, meaning of man. Um, it, it's gonna, you're going to have these people who quite literally are not alive. And I know to them, it sounds any kind of labor, any kind of production sounds horrible. That's the last thing you ever want, but that is, what's going to give you purpose. You're going to have the purposeless and the purposeful and the purposeful may not be glorious. It may be hard work, but at least they got a reason to get up in the morning. And there's going to be such a huge existential crisis, uh, which I think is going to drive up suicide rates or certainly antidepressant use of alcohol consumption and all that other stuff mm. uh, coming down the road. Uh, but people are not their their fear of work is going to keep them pigeonholed into the, into the purposeless. But it's going to put this I can't find a girl's thing to shame. It's going to be a bigger existential crisis than that. But Well, that's but what that's I'm thinking, dumb. Rolo, John, if you agree. It's this learning to get the girls. Yeah, I get it. Ty Clary's tired of talking about it. You've talked enough game. You wrote a book even just to say why you should learn it. That's kind of like the the, the gateway drug. You know that slippery slope? Oh, you start pot, you're going to do heroin. Well, you first learn to hit on chicks and be competent about sleeping with chicks. And then all of a sudden you're going to get good at your job. And all of a sudden you're going to be good at fixing your car. I found that so many cases, like the first thing every red pill guy does when he starts working on his marriage by learning like, you know, the red pill mental models. The next thing that happens, he finds out he's earning a 25% more at work because he never had the assertiveness to ask for a raise or switch jobs before. Mm. Anyways, I, I'm curious your thoughts on this. I find it fucking fascinating how it's like. I think it comes down to, again, like the, the I think one of the best books, like if you're go if you're a reader and actually read the book, don't just listen to it. But um uh, a really great book by Robert Greene is called Mastery, and I think it's probably one of the best books. He, like next to 48 Laws of Power, I think it's probably the most useful, most significant book he's ever written, although people will probably argue with me. Um, and it's not just about, you know, 10,000 hours equals mastery. It's like the process and the things you have to sort of do, because I think we have to get over ourselves uh, a lot of times to say, OK, I'm going to bust myself down to the rank of apprentice so I can learn how to do this shit so that I can attain at least even a passable competency, not to say nothing of mastery. Um, you know, I've been playing guitar since I was like 13 or 14 years old. So I've been doing it for quite some time. I think I've got the 10,000 hours in for playing guitar. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that the idea of uh, investing time into something is so foreign an idea to like certainly the millennial generation and, the, and Gen Z right now that. You know, guys like in Gen X, such as myself and, and Aaron, we get really frustrated with this because it's like, we're like, how, how do you not know this shit? And it's because they have this instant gratification and they have this instant upload 
of information. So I always say, you know, well, boy, wouldn't it have been great if I had uh, YouTube to teach me how to play Eruption when I was a kid instead of having the cassette tape and ruining the cassette tape, trying to figure out each and every little teeny tiny part of that so I could play it if once or twice, right? <laughs> but that mm -hmm. was part of the the mastery that went into, uh, you know, becoming a, a decent guitar player. Now, the other thing is like, just I was telling you before, I uh, I got these, I ordered these headlights and I ordered this really nice looking grill to put on the Tacoma and they came from you know amazon they came in from you know wherever they were coming from and my my wife's looking at me like what the hell is this i go oh they're headlights and she's like okay and then the grill came she's like what's this i go this is a grill i'm gonna put it on the tacoma and I, so i went out to do it yesterday she's like do you know how to do this i'm like not yet i don't <laughs> not yet but i will by the end of the day i will <laughs> but you have the fundamental skills you know exactly. how to turn a screwdriver you know yeah. how to solder things you know how to put clamps exactly. on exactly and then so you know and i'm just not saying i didn't go to youtube to, to try to you know avoid a lot of the pitfalls right but um but it's kind of like that part in the matrix where they have to uh like uh, what is it the uh, trinity has to fly the helicopter off the off the top of the building and and neo's like do you know how to fly that thing she's like not yet <laughs> hmm. and it just uploads you know they uploaded the the info the competency into her brain so she can actually pilot this this you know this helicopter and uh, that, i think that that's what a lot of guys think that that the internet represents or that instant gratification i can get instant pleasure why can i not get instant mastery why can i not just simply you know follow these quick you know in easy steps and if i can't do it then i'm a loser and there's other programs to not be a loser so it's like this, it's incrementally this, uh, this sort of pleasure of accomplishment. Like people always want to say, oh, that's the difference between like, what is it? Dopamine and serotonin or whatever it is. Mm. No, it's the, it's, it's you being wanting instant gratification versus putting in the time and effort and energy you would need to even just be competent in something to tie a fucking tie around your neck, right? That takes practice. You have to figure out how to do that. How like. We always joke about how like this generation doesn't know how to like drive a stick shift because they've never had to, they've never <laughs> had to you know drive a manual transmission. I'm fairly certain that that Cappy knows how to drive a manual transmission. Why? Because you probably learned to drive when you were 16 on a manual transmission. I know because I, I did exactly the same thing. I I, I will confess this. I did it because it actually helped me get girls. Like, learn yeah, to yeah they were impressed like i was driving yeah oh, I oh do you remember the old flirty thing you. when girls tried to show off and they would try to run the stick while you do the clutch and then after they ground your transmission you're like all right stop that i don't care a my, lot. my brother and i were, were we were total gearheads back in the day too and it's yeah. like that yeah we we learned to, to drive on stick um, but like, it wasn't so much a flex as it was just like, that's what we had to do. Now, if you don't have an automatic transmission, like I'm looking at like what would be considered like, you know, if I'm looking at a, uh, what is it? Like a, a, a Dodge Hellcat, like a Challenger Hellcat, or I'm looking at like a Camaro or something. They don't have stick. They have like the, the little, the, the transmission on the, on the, on the column or on the, uh, yeah, on the, on the, on the steering wheel and all that. And I'm like, and if you don't have that, if you have to drive a stick, well, you're just an old man or you're just like, yeah, you, um, uh, you, you're a loser Ooh. because you can't afford a car that isn't a stick. And so now the flex becomes, Matt, I don't have that mastery, but you don't need that mastery. It's not, it's disqualification of that mastery because if you were really a winner, you'd be able to afford a car that was an automatic. Dude, that segues perfect into this super chat here. And I was also thinking like, remember that? Like, why do I need to learn math? Well, so you're learning how to think. But yeah, you're Glenn here. What are your thoughts on the lack of courage in men being contributed to not wanting to be labeled a man with toxic masculinity? Or like you said, the boomer with the stick shift. Yep. Something I've heard that an officer in Texas said about lack of responding to the school shooter. Ooh, now I we're think, getting topical. I don't, I don't think it's necessarily a lack mm -hmm. of courage. Mm -hmm. I think I think they it's like legal protection. Like, Well, no, not, not them specifically, but I get his point. The, the whole idea mm -hmm. that men don't want to be called the bad name. They don't want to be judged mm -hmm. badly. And so they yeah. don't. They have no center of origin. They don't. They're too you worried about what people think. You get the men you create. You get the men you deserve, yeah. ladies. Mm -hmm. So like, you'll see the same, like this, the same conversation comes up every time you see some new video of some, some chick getting the shit beat out of her on the New York subway. Like, where are the men? How come they're not stepping in to help this, mm -hmm. this young lady? Are blah, you saying blah, blah. they're no longer on the menu? No, no. Oh, holy oh. shit. That's a book. I'm going to buy seven oh, copies. You, you guys should too. Ten, ten copies. Buy nine. Mm -hmm. Ten copies. Yeah. Yeah. That's a law I, of the universe right now. Get it. it. Yeah, it, it definitely has something to do with that for sure. 
But uh, I would also argue that um, it's, it, 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 you know, avoiding this sort of toxic masculinity thing. Yeah. But it's also um, the, the, the a generational like teaching kind of thing. It's not so much like fear as it is. Don't get involved. It's not I don't think it's a fear of like being deemed toxically masculine. It's just that they've never developed the understanding of like, you know, putting putting yourself in between. Uh, defending someone or, or putting your, or getting involved to begin with. And the toxic masculinity side is just the name that we give to that. So like I've said before, there's no such thing as toxic masculinity. There's just masculinity and there's the aspects of it that are convenient. And, and there are aspects that are inconvenient to a gynocentric social order. In this case, running into the burning building to save the baby from burning up, that would not be considered toxic masculinity, but it's the same impetus of the guy who puts his face in front of someone's fist or the same impetus of the guy who um who is in some way asserting his authority Schrodinger's that's masculinity. masculinity but it's it's derived from the same masculine nature that sends the guy in to go get the baby from the burning building or to go and put and go you know uh, confront an active shooter or to um uh, in in you know when the floodwaters start rising, you know to go save that. It's all part of that same thing. It's just what's convenient and what's not. And we look at that in the after aftermath of stuff like this, and we go, oh, what what cowards we have men who are are, are cowardly. I, I hear this by the way all the time when we talk about putting women into like, and it's never going to happen by the way. But hmm. when we talk about making women, uh, you have to it's sign up for selective service, right? But we're going to draft women. Oh yeah, the old make the, the repeal the nineteenth two point oh. The trad side will say it's because men are such pussies that we have to expect women to go fight their battles for them. No, it's not. It's because you know they were trying to do some. They want it to be some sort of fair, you know, fair, you know. Uh, gender parity i guess but the, the you'll you'll hear it from the opposite side where they'll say oh well men need to man up and stop being such pussies which they do but that's not the that's not the point of all of that but we get yeah. again we get the men that we created we get the men that we deserve and that's this is that's where we're at right now and they you know whether they're they're fearful of toxic masculinity i doubt it they're just pussies yeah but so, john's mm -hmm. right too with the mental point of origin you kind of really do have to like, I know we say to be social, you kind of have to understand how your actions affect people around you, but you really got to stop caring about their judgment. Like, is this toxic or not? Shouldn't enter into your mm -hmm. decision making because any anything that's bad or good from another person's perspective is always going to be not as good for you and your perspective. Right. Yeah. Like you writing a stick shift, you made it to work. You fixed your chart, made you happy. Somebody calls you an old boomer with a stick shift. Like, how does that help you? It doesn't. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess we're going to do the oh, two last super chaps here, then we'll finish. Or forcing up. yourself to drive a freaking Tesla in, you know. Yeah. Tesla's it's, faster it's, than a Lamborghini. And instead, of, instead of a car that you really enjoy. Like, I, when I, when, before I bought my truck, before I bought my first, like, nice mm -hmm. truck, new truck, I, I spent I spent a while, you know, six months looking at cars and trying to figure out, like, what car I liked or what type of car I wanted to get. And I couldn't really come to that decision. And I realized like, I don't like cars. <laughs> I like <laughs> trucks. <laughs> so I started looking Answer at trucks. It got you. so much funner and like, it was more exciting to be looking think, for the trucks. Cause that was, what's what I liked. It's what I, I am. A lot of people, just to tag something on to the end of this too. Like I was talking about like how, you know, if you were, if you were actually a winner, you wouldn't have to do your, your own, um, your own yard work or your own car work or whatever else, right? If you actually had the money to do that, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do that. You'd be off mm -hmm. making money and do, doing deals and being a big shot, right? That's, that's my one stuff. aspect. Like that. Of my stuff. Well, that's that, what it, what that does is it defends the uh, instant gratification mentality, right? Like why, why would anyone do something like that? I see this by the way, when people say, you know what, you need to bust yourself down and make life harder for yourself, right? You got to go on the keto diet, right? You've got to go and, and sort of uh, go off the grid and live in the backwoods and be a prepper or whatever else, right? And make life harder for yourself uh, yeah, in order to, you know, hardship. Better, like to, to be a manly man, to, the deus vault man you know save the west right you go go out there and live on the live off the land kind of thing and then you'll get the guys who'll say like like that's like some sort of like flex on guys like oh i live off the land and i fish my own fish out of the river kind of thing and then at the same time you'll have people go well yeah because you're a loser because you don't need to go fish fish out of the river you can just go down to the store and buy a trout or whatever it is right you, there's the there why would you go backwards why would you go hunting well i think why it's the guys you? trying to use it as a flex but the flex doesn't re like it's not resonant with the people they're flexing to mm -hmm. 
And that's the issue. That's why you're just being poor. There's a certain pert girl that I'm sure loves homesteaders, but he's not flexing to them. He's flexing to the soy boy who earns like tech money. Mm-hmm. And so I think they're having the two different conversations. That's right. why you see like a lot of like political arguments, same thing where it's um, whatever the second amendment is this, or the, you know, guns are bad. This they're having these two different conversations because they're dealing with two separate sets of values. Have you seen, have you, I, I use this as an example in, uh, in, um, I think oh, yeah? it was religion. Well, no, it was, have you seen those memes where they'll show you like a cabin in the woods, right? And it, it's like, it looks like it's very rural. Like there's no, no communication, whatever. And then the meme is, would you live in this cabin for six months with no internet and no contact oh, yeah. with for a hundred thousand dollars? And of course everybody goes, Oh, do it for nothing. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of shit right there. That's what I'm talking about. Like they they want to say, well, this was this is the uh, this is this idyllic lifestyle is to cut yourself off and and not to to you know check your status on Instagram or whatever else. And if you luddite know, ubermensch, <laughs> go. Kind of thing. It's funny to me that that's a flex now. Like to say, oh yes, I would live in a cabin, no problem. You know, <laughs> I would love. Well, that's to the same as like those. How would you there. open flexes? Where the guys like, I would never hit on a slut like that. I'm like, fuck off, you wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gee, this girl that's down to fuck, don't want that. Yeah. That'd be a fucking shame. Ew. Ew. Yep. Ooh, here and Burton's Ew. good point too Ew. with his uh, ten dollars super chat here. He's got hobbies, works on cards, builds furniture. Believe me, women absolutely love to have conversations about it. That's the like his his thing here. I used to do this all the time. Take a girl to the museum, talk about art. Girls do not give a shit about art, but they give a shit about a cool dude that they want to sleep with who has an interest in something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They, they like you. And because they like you, yep. they like the stuff you like. Rolo, remember this? Two years ago, we used to talk about this. You were like the 49ers or some bullshit football team, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and then your wife likes it too. Bullshit. Not because she's a huge 49ers fan. She's a huge fucking Rolo fan. And mm-hmm. so the girl's brain has that little bit of borderline in her that makes her like what the guy she likes likes that's fucking hypergamy everybody's not a straight jacket yeah that's why she makes her own compatibility yeah so and honestly these guys that want to do the cabin in the woods and they're flexing all this other shit if you were hot and attractive and girls liked you girls would probably like it too so it could be a flex but it all comes down to you got to have the right amount of game to get people to like you that soft power mm-hmm. I, i'd simplify it even to this and bring in another angle girls like guys who do things Ooh. Yep. They don't well, they like, like guys, guys who, they like to do good. things. Well, no, no, there's there's that too. It's like, creative okay, if, if, if you're very good looking, okay, girls are going to like you. And you could say, I, I like whatever, debarking trees. Oh, my God, I always like debarking trees. But yeah. if given the average Joe and the average Joe can fix a lawnmower and, you know, whatever, clean out a small carburetor on an engine or the guy God, who can't hard. and needs to go and – they're on intuitively and unconsciously. They're going to go with the guy who can fix shit because mm-hmm. not only is he higher value, but it's like, mm-hmm. they know somewhere deep in the re- like, Oh, that guy could protect me. And that's very important. He's got skills. Improvisation is creative yeah. intelligence is selected for, by the way. Okay. All right. That's what, and there's a, there's a, a lot of very re- replicable uh, experiments, Ryan, uh, of oh, yeah. how women select for, well, fem- females in general and any species, but like human females, uh, I hate to get like, you know, Mr. Wizard here, but they've mm-hmm. done, I, I remember when I was, uh, I was at university, I read this, uh, I did a study of it was the creative intelligence is selected for by women. So they did these, uh, um, they did these polls with you know women who, like who's more attractive. It's basically the same guy, but they're saying they're giving you a background of the guy. One of them is a guy who made a lot of money because uh, he inherited it from his father, and he has no real you know marketable skills. He just has a lot of money. How attractive is this guy? Then you've got the guy who is uh, sort of this um, starving artist, but he has the potential to make a lot of money. How attractive is that guy? And then there's the guy who has had a lot of money and then lost all of that money, and then generated it again, like started, you know, like started another company and then suddenly became more, um, more successful because he lost all of it and then he recreated it once again. And that guy tends, if it's the same, like looks are, are not the issue here. It's basically, it's the same guy, the same imagery of the guy, the guy who can, uh, who has the creative intelligence to be able to come back from adversity, like say that, you know, the tornado wipes out the village. Well, he's the kind of guy who has the skills or the curiosity or the creative intelligence to rebuild the village. Once again, that guy tends to be more and more uh, attractive. Let's just say in the long term for women than the guy who just wins the lottery. Mm -hmm. So um, there's, there's something to be said about competency. Competency is, it might not be an arousal cue, but it is most definitely an attraction cue for women. Oh dude, I get, perfect story of this two things my girl when she first got attracted to me 
after like the initial game and stuff was mm-hmm. that and this is going to sound nerdy but i built a computer and put it inside of a super nintendo it could play every game it had its own version of like spotify and like netflix on it back in the day you had to download movies put them on a hard drive mm-hmm. she thought that was the coolest shit ever that he had built this with his own two hands and the other thing was when i was at fleet school basically telling other guys to to build things and she's like my fleet school voice she goes you sound like a fucking asshole when you're at work i'm like yeah but the guy and she's like but the guys love you why i'm not gonna explain it here but yeah it was still two types of competencies and you guys have explained it the whole time john with your truck and you never had to like and just the fact you can fight or the fact that you're teaching guys how to fight it's very attractive a girl same Protect. thing with you rollo mm-hmm. sees you front manning a band holy shit, that's awesome as shit. You're not building anything, but you're in charge. Mm-hmm. Or you're like fixing your Tacoma, strapping a 50 cal on the back to go to Africa or something. Mm-hmm. And I well, think it's, it's yeah, but that's the thing. You don't have to build something, but it's a very mm-hmm. easy and underutilized way. Such low hanging fruit for guys. Well, that's why that's why you get looks maxers right now. They think it's all just about, you know, arousal cues. This is arousal and attraction, right? So yeah. guys, you got guys think, well, I got, if I don't have a jaw, I have a chin. If I don't have, I'm a chin cell, you know, if I don't have, yeah. if I'm not built, then, then you know, the, the girls aren't going to like me. But then when we talk about like competencies, when we talk about congruency, when we talk about like game and in by in this term, I mean like, you know, social skills to actually carry on a conversation in the first place, mm-hmm. have yeah. something more to you than just being, you know, giga Chad. Um, when, when we look at the, when we look at the alpha fucks and beta bucks side of things, when we look at the beta buck side, it's provisioning protection and parental investment. And John's got, you know, I mean, he was an MMA fighter. So like women already think he's hot because he's, you know, he's been doing this and he has a capacity for violence, but that's attractive because it triggers the protection need for the, on the beta buck side of things. So there's the long-term security. Remember women need long-term security longer then they have the ability to uh, to attract a guy who can provide that long term security for them. So that's why those things like creative intelligence, competency, mastery, uh, being able to do things, you know, work with your hands, build things, create things. That's why that's still attractive. Like I have guys who will ask me, like, why is it roll? Why is it that like these emo guys are like so attractive? Why, how come like uh, these these you know weedy rock stars uh, they, they attract so many women or they're like they look like they're heroin thin and all this other shit? And I go, yeah, because that's the part of it is is the the fame and the status, of course. Uh, and then you know maybe they find them it's somewhat arousing. But the other part is that um, it's the um, it's the idea that the guy has creative intelligence and he will be uh, rewarded for it. Like he will, he'll, he'll receive accolades from, from more people. And she wants to be associated with that. So, yeah. All right. So one more super chat. And then I know Clary, we got to get you back to Perkins. So we'll wrap it up here. Uh, yes. I, uh, My retaining wall calleth. <laughs> Duke of Hex expires at the end of the day here. Perfect. Actually, this is the perfect one to end off with. Thank you for your Mexican hundred dollars. <laughs> my single parent mother overprotected me Excellent. and now i had to learn to be a man of my own clearly messed me up yeah. this is the guy i was talking about at the beginning as to why i thought we'd have a good time with this one this is the kind of guy who will follow like jordan peterson because he stuck it to the trans community or whatever but then you know moves over to this guy and then follows this guy and then this guy like a lost boy but he's got potential there's nothing stopping him from being a man he's got the same two arms and two legs that clary does he can grow the same beard that John does. He has the same eyeglasses that Rolo has. And the whole point of this whole speech was to teach guys how to speed up that process so you don't have to jump from five to six to seven gurus selling you snake oil till you finally get to Clary, read the menu, and realize, I don't need any of that shit. I can just build a retaining wall and just be a man. It's very man. Many women have showed up to watch me build my retaining wall. Dude, I'm not even doubting it. I bet you they did. At what point do you let? At what point do you let your past, like you, you insist that your past is not going to define you anymore? At what point? At what point? At what point do you do? You know what? I live a pretty fucked up life, and you know my dad beat the shit out of me, and like you know what? I'm done with that. I'm moving on. I'm better than that. At what point yeah. do you do that? Right. Yeah. At what point do you decide? Better. At what point do you decide to take like re, you know response agency? Level? Yeah. yeah agency at what point do you say you know what yeah that's some pretty fucked up shit but you know what i'm done with that and i that's nuts i'm not going to allow that experience to define me right and that's i, I think a lot of you know we, we were talking about passage uh ryan you know we've, we've had that discussion before i kept telling guys i said you know if you if you've sort of unplugged yourself from the matrix if you've taken the quote-unquote red pill whatever if you see things in a different light you need to have some sort of like 
I don't know, ritual or something, something to remind you of the fact that you're no longer part of this and you're now a part of this instead of dwelling on that shit. Because another thing that you will be manipulated with and you will be exploited for and leveraged by is the fact that people want to say, well, you've got fear and you've got problems and you have a background that you, know, you had a fucked up life, childhood or whatever, you, you whatever it is. And if just me by me saying that I sound arrogant because I'm like, oh, you don't understand. You don't have any sympathy for my 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 problems or whatever i'm like i have sympathy for it but i would don't have any sympathy for what i don't have sympathy for is allowing that shit to define who you're going to be into the future and people will make money hand over fist trying to tell you once again that they have the template program to help you get over that right you had a shitty childhood you're fearing success you're whatever the whatever the you know the buzzword is from tony robbins or or gary v or whatever your success porn guru is there have there's a trust me there is a program that will play upon all that and 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 be the one to, to provide you with your solution to get over your your shitty childhood and they'll it, you know 12 steps for getting over a shitty childhood and you know what you'll buy it and you'll go well whenever i'm ready to get over my shitty childhood at least i have the instruction manual from tony robbins or whoever else it is that's that's selling me the solution to that you are being manipulated you are the one who is ultimately responsible. the student is the one who is ultimately responsible for his education it is up to you to vet your teachers and you will not be educated until you do do the right. work can we summarize with that do the work all right, so let's end this one off. Aaron, do what Trump didn't do. Build the wall. <laughs> Sean, I'll catch you later. 